I've discovered an efficient, simple, and logical method of naming all your genealogy and photo files. Does that sound too good to be true? Well, believe me, I've tried it out and I think you're going to love it. We'll talk about it right after this. Hi fellow roadie, I'm Greg. I've been finding my family history for over 30 years now, and I make these videos to share with you tips and tricks I've learned along the way. And to share also my mistakes, and believe me, I've made them. But I wanna share that so that you don't make the same mistakes. But I'm still learning, which brings me to today's video. I've discovered a fantastic way to name your photo and document files that is so logical, well, I wish I had come up with it, but you know, I'm, I wasn't smart enough to do that. So this naming method is the brainchild of a gentleman named John Zimmerman. Uh, one or two years ago, I found an article written by him. I printed out a hard copy of the article, but I didn't save a soft copy and I didn't remember where I found it. So I plugged the article name into Google with no luck. So I tracked him down. Hmm, not creepy, huh? Uh, so I called him on the phone. We had a great conversation, and I asked him for permission to share his method with you, my fellow roadie. He very generously agreed, so I'm sharing that with you now. Now, I refer to this method as the Zimmerman method, or Z method, although he's much too humble to name it that. But here's my attempt to give you a summary along with my own comments. Now, as family historians, we have likely gathered a large number of old and new family photographs and documents. Now, if you're anything like me, these files are a jumble of random file names, most of them not very descriptive, like this, or this, or even this. Now, John gives a file name example of Aunt Mary on Porch 53. John says a file name like that raises a lot of questions, and I agree. Like, who was Aunt Mary? Where was that porch? Now, was 53 part of the year and address or Aunt Mary's age? Now, even if you know exactly what that means, will other family members know? Will your children or grandchildren know? Ah, man, there has to be a better way. Now, John played with the idea of using a series of nesting folders. You may have done the same thing, or maybe you've already done it. Under, for example, a media folder, you would have a folder for a surname, then subfolders for different topics. Like me, add even more folders under the surname for each person with that surname. Then repeat that for each and every surname. Now you can see where that would get crazy. And it did drive me crazy. <coughs> Don't do this to yourself. John suggests putting only four folders under your media folder. Docs, Indiv for individuals, groups and places. Then each file will have a descriptive name, taking advantage of the long 255 character limit in both Windows and Mac OS. Now, keep in mind that file name lengths include the full path to the file. That's another great reason to not have a long string of folders with many levels of subfolders. Instead, those characters can be used for a truly descriptive file name. I'll take a look at this. Now, this is just a path. This doesn't even include the file name. This first one, you see, Greg, Media, Connor, Joe Connor, Senior, Census, 1920. I mean, geez. But the new version saves 25 characters that we can put towards the uh, descriptive file name. So then, the file name for Aunt Mary, for that picture for Aunt Mary, could look like this. Here you can see Aunt Mary's maiden name, her given names, 
than this name in between dashes. That's her married name. The dashes indicate an alternate name. If she had been married previously, then her other married names would also be included separately, also between dashes. Then you see her lifespan, her birth and death dates, if known. Now, if you only know her birth date, then you would use 1888 dash. If you only know her death date, you would use dash 1964. Now, if you know neither date, then of course you would have, you would put no entry for that at all. Now, why use the person's birth and death dates in the photo or document description? Well, that will make sure that people with the same name and are identified separately from the others. For example, I have several people in, in my ancestry with my same name, surname, with the given name, John. I mean, lots of them. Using this method, ensures that the correct people with the same name are grouped together. The rest of the file name includes the year of the photo, if known, and the location as specifically as you know it. In this case, an exact address. So when you have a group of photos under this naming system, if you sort all the files under the indiv folder, you will get all of the names in alphabetical order with all of the people of the same name all together. Now, this is only the tip of the iceberg in how to name files under this system. Now, John has generously agreed to let me share the article, the whole article that he's written about this. To get John's full article that gives a lot more information and suggestions, find a link to that article in the video description below. Now look, uh, no naming system is going to be perfect. You may take a look at John's system and decide to tweak it for your own needs. However you decide to name your files, the most important thing to do is stay consistent. Remember, consistency is the key. Hey, thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time on the Road to Your Family History.